this is, this is mind-blowing stuff. One of the most striking discoveries of modern science has been that the laws and the constants of physics, the numbers that govern the universe, unexpectedly conspire in an extraordinary way to make the universe habitable for life. In other words, the universe is finely tuned on a razor's edge in a way that defies mere chance and which points powerfully and is best explained by the existence of a creator. Let me give you just a few examples. I want to start with my favorite one, which is the force of gravity. The force of gravity is finely tuned to an incomprehensible degree so that life can exist. If you, if you imagine the universe and imagine these giant dials, you know, this, you know like a, the old Flash Gordon show. Remember those movies? I'm dating myself, but they were great back in the 60s. Um, but you got these, if you imagine the cosmos has these huge dials. And what I'm saying is, say there's about 30 of these dials or more, they are just absolutely precisely calibrated so that life can exist in an incomprehensible way. That can't be explained by mere chance. And just, so imagine one of these dials is the dial that controls the force of gravity. And what physicists have determined is the force of gravity could have been set over a wide range of possibilities. It didn't have to be where it is. It could have been at anything. In fact, they have calculated that the force of gravity, if you imagine a ruler that stretched across the entire known universe and is broken down in one-inch increments, so you got this ruler stretching billions of light years across the universe. That represents what scientists plausibly believe could have been the range at which gravity could have been set, anywhere along that range. But it happens to be set at just the right place so that life can exist in the universe. Now, what would happen if you took this ruler going all the way across the universe and you saw where gravity was, was set and you moved it by one inch compared to the width of the universe? What would happen? Catastrophic! consequences, intelligent life would be impossible in the universe. If you adjusted the force of gravity by one inch compared to the width of the entire known universe, that is how finely tuned it is. Is that an accident? Did that just happen by coincidence? Well, that's just one example, as I said, of you know, maybe as many as 30 or more ways in which these dials are set. Let me just give you another one. It's called the cosmological constant. That's a big word, but, but what it means is it's the energy density of space. And all you really need to know about the cosmological constant is it's got to be exactly right or the universe falls apart. If the cosmological constant were a positive number and a large number, the universe would fly apart. Um, planets could never have coalesced. We'd have no sun. We'd have no stars. If the cosmological constant were a negative number and large, the universe would have just collapsed upon itself. So the cosmological constant has to be exactly right in order for the universe to exist and for life to exist. How precisely does it have to be calibrated? Scientists have now determined that the cosmological constant is finely tuned to one part in a hundred million billion 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 billion. That's how precise it is. Now, how do you, how do you understand that number? Picture going on into outer space, and you look back at the Earth, and the Earth's about this big. You're way up in space, in the space shuttle or something, the Earth's about that big. How finely tuned is the cosmological constant? The precision is so amazing. It would be as if you took a dart from outer space, and you threw it at the Earth, and it hit the Earth, and it hit a bullseye one trillionth of a trillionth of an inch in diameter. That is how finely tuned the cosmological constant is. Is that... A coincidence? It's mind-boggling. Now, if you just add together the fine-tuning of gravity and the cosmological constant, the two that I've talked about, the fine-tuning would be to a precision of one part in a hundred million trillion 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 trillion. In other words, this fine-tuning would be the equivalent of one atom. It takes a million atoms lined up to equal the width of a human hair. One atom compared to the entire known universe. That would be how fi the fine-tuning is if you just look at those two things, gravity and the cosmological constant. But as I said, there are dozens of other examples of the way in which these dials have been precisely set so that life can exist. For instance, the strong nuclear force. This is the force that binds the nuclei of atoms together. 
If you were to decrease the strong nuclear force by just one part in 10,000 billion, 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 all we would have in the universe is hydrogen. No intelligent life would be possible. He just changed it. One part in 10,000 billion, 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 billion. Or consider this. Unless the number of electrons is equivalent to the number of protons to an accuracy of just one part in a trillion, 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 then galaxies and stars and planets could never have formed. That's unbelievable. I'll give you, just to illustrate that, one last example of the, um, um, the equivalency between uh, electrons and protons. It would be, how finely tuned is that? That would be like taking a dime and stacking up dimes 236,000 miles to the moon. And then it would be like doing that in another pile and another pile so that you have all of North America with dimes piled all the way up to the moon. And you choose one dime at random and you spray paint it red and you mix it up in all those dimes. And you have blindfold a person and he reaches in and he can pull out only one dime. It would have to be the red dime. In other words, his chances of pulling out the red dime would be one chance in a trillion, trillion, trillion. Again, that's just one of the parameters. You put all of these together and it makes a mind-blowing argument for the existence of a creator who set the parameters exactly right so that life could exist. He created a habitat for the people that he eventually created. Vera Kistiakowsky, who's a professor emeritus at MIT, physics, an uh, uh, expert in physics, former president of the Association of Women in Science, put it this way. The exquisite order displayed by our scientific understanding of the physical world calls for the divine. It just calls for the divine. Now, how do atheists avoid this? I, how, how, I mean, you look at that and you go, is that not unbelievable evidence for the existence of God? Well, they say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if there was another explanation? What if there were actually an infinite number of invisible universes that we can't see? And by chance, the dials, all these dials, and all the, they're spun at random. And because there's an infinite number of universes, we happen to be in the lucky universe. We happen to be in the one that had the dials, by chance, hit the exact right calibration so that life might be possible. And that's, that's the only way I've seen that atheists have been trying to argue against this evidence. Because if you look at it as face, it is almost conclusive that God exists. The problem with that argument is there's absolutely no evidence of an infinite number of other universes. Besides, as one, one physicist told me, I interviewed him for my book, his name's Robin Collins, uh, interviewed for, uh, for The Case for a Creator. He said, you know what, even if the atheists are right and there is an infinite number of other universes, it would provide only further evidence for a creator. And I scratched my head and said, how is that possible? He said, well, he said, I'll use my bread-making machine as an example. He had one of these old bread-making machines. He said, if you want to make an edible loaf of bread, you need a well-designed machine with the right circuitry, the right heating element, the right timer, and you have to have the right ingredients in the right order and in the right proportions. And if you do that, you get a loaf of bread. If you don't do it right, you get a hockey puck, basically, essentially, is what you get. Now, he said, a universe is far more complicated than a loaf of bread. And if it takes a finely tuned mechanism and the right ingredients to produce a loaf of bread, then it would require a finely tuned mechanism and finely tuned process to produce many universes and such a finely tuned mechanism calls out for a creator. So either way, the creator wins. So I believe that the evidence of physics by itself is so powerful. In fact, it was so powerful, it was successful as being a major reason that an atheist educated at Harvard University, a professor at Georgetown University named Patrick Glenn, it was a central reason why he moved from atheism to Christianity. He wrote a book about it called God the Evidence. And here's what he said. Today, the concrete data point strongly in the direction of the God hypothesis. Those who wish to oppose it have no testable theory to marshal. Only speculations about unseen universes spun from fertile imaginations. Ironically, he said, the picture of the universe given to us by the most advanced 20th century science is closer in spirit to the vision presented in the book of Genesis than anything offered by science since Copernicus. And it was largely because of this evidence that Patrick Glenn turned from atheism to faith. 
So I'm in personal opinion, the evidence from cosmology and the evidence from physics to me is probably enough to convince